Hello and welcome back to GoldStockTrades.com. Today we have back here with us Tom Irwin. Tom is CEO of International Tower Hill Mines, which can be traded as THM on the NYSE MKT, and it also can be traded as ITH on the TSX. Thanks, Tom, for being back here with us today. Oh, you're welcome, Jeb, and it's, it's good to hear your voice. Tom, in late 2014, there was a significant investment into International Tower Hill Mines of over $7 million U.S. You have some top institutional shareholders, uh, such as Tocqueville and Paulson and Company. Could you talk to us about the significance uh, in this market for a junior mining company to raise that substantial amount uh, of capital? Well, Jeb, yes, it's it's incredibly important that we're able to raise that type of capital because of what we want to accomplish. Uh, we're pleased that uh, Tocqueville and, and Paulson would provide this kind of support, and I would add that support was in a private placement, non-brokered, no warrants, no fees. Um, these two companies and the people in them certainly understand how this project is leveraged to the gold price, how it has opportunities to lower capital and operating costs, and they believe in the future of it, and uh, we're very pleased to have that type of support. Tom, in early 2015 this year, you announced some progress on Live and Good. Uh, and op and uh, on on the mine plan and optimization plans, could you talk to us and update us on how management's working on optimizing the design of this project? Jeb, we've been focused on just looking at everything we have with this project, with the goal of reducing operating and capital costs. Uh, Carl Hahnem and I. With, and Carl Hahnemann's our Alaska general manager, along with the support from our company's technical committee, and then from individuals or companies that have expertise, we've gone back and looked at every bit of uh, data information testing on this project, not only from the FS that was released, but the data going back to the formation of the Live and Good Coal project. And the way we've approached it is, of course, you first start with the ore body. And, Jeb, we, um, with uh, metal mining consultants and using their MapTech Vulcan mine modeler, um, we, d we did a lot of work. And, and this is supported not only by us, but uh, some of the companies that we have confidentiality agreements with, uh, to really go back and, and look at the mine modeling and we ran it from a little over 11,000 tonnes per day project to 90,000 tonnes per day. And it sets the tone, the foundation of how we can approach and optimize mining of this 20 million gold ounce uh, project. Um, we also looked at pit slopes. You can certainly, and, and safety is paramount. We'll never cut corners on that. But the first few benches can certainly have a different slope, particularly if it's a different ore type than the ultimate slope. And uh, we could steepen them up to save money. And, and uh, we have completed this mine modeling work to where we feel now we're ready and we're moving forward on the metallurgical review. Now, in the metallurgical work we did last year, and, and being honest, there was one rock type that had a lower grade, we felt, than had been reported in the FS. And the way you beat these things is be honest, not, not duck them. It was in one of our rock types. The good news was it's the last we get to, lowest in the ore body, so it certainly doesn't impact upfront costs. We've done a lot of work on head grade. What's the correct head grade for the different rock types? The work we've done with AMEC and the individuals there that we have a lot of faith in 
and respect for because we've worked with them in the past. Um, we have absolutely confirmed that the grade of this project that we've reported is conservative. And we're moving forward um, and we'll continue to work on, on the head grade and, and confirm where we're at. In the metallurgical work, we have many areas we're going to be working on. And the private placement we talked about is allowing us to do this work. Um, we need to cut costs wherever appropriate. We're not looking for maximum gold production. We're looking for the most economic production of an ounce of gold. And to do that, we've gone back to the uh, grinding circuit. Um, our, one of our biggest costs in the mill, 30% of it, is power. We're taking a look at grind size. What are we getting for grind size? Power consumption. And along with that, uh, we have already studied what's the economic impact if we produce our own power. And the state's working hard on getting uh, lower cost power to the interior. So it's important to us. The gravity circuit. When we reviewed it, it was clear we had liberated gold not being recovered in the gravity circuit and, and moving on to the leach train. We've been working with other companies that have gravity circuits, our own experience, and of course people, the companies that make gravity equipment themselves. So we're working hard on that. Reagent consumptions, and this ties in uh, both with the correct recovery in gravity but also the size of the leach train, the retention time, uh, the addition rates, uh, and we're going through the, the whole test work again. Uh, we have some very clear ideas from plotting our own information from the test work, our own analysis of, of various items we want to study. The goal being, again, to minimize the cost most economic uh, ounce production. We're then going to apply all these tests to the various rock types when we get that done. And of course, this can't be in parallel. They're all in series, these tests. Then we'll set, here is the preferred flow sheet for the Live and Good project. We will then need to do additional engineering work to uh, update the, the project costs. Again, the goal, we have to lower accurately operating and capital costs. We'll do engineering for the cost of the facility. Jeb, paralleling that, we're also going to be doing work uh, this summer back out on site. We, we have plenty of water well, large diameter holes, but we're going to be doing more pump tests to see if we can't use that to supplant one of the water reservoirs. Everything's on the table to relook at for reducing capital, such as uh, a large camp versus busing back and forth. In, in those kind of studies, you also have to weigh in safety, retention time, and our employees are paramount. So we're doing a complete look at it, and uh, we intend to roll all these together into another update on the project. Tom, I always enjoy talking to you, especially uh, you give me so much insight into mining in Alaska. Uh, you've been in Alaska since 90, 1992. Uh, you've you've brought uh, helped bring the Fort Knox mine that's operated today by Kinross into production. You also worked... Uh, uh, for six years as the commissioner of the Alaska Department of Natural Resources uh, for the state. So you have both sides of uh, the equation, both from a permitting side uh, and the company side, and yet you've, you've come and joined Tower Hill Mines. Could you describe the opportunity that you see uh, with your 40 years of experience uh, in the Live and Good Project uh, and what you find so exciting uh, in Tower Hill Mines? Well, Jeb, that's, that's fun to talk about because I truly retired. 
And um, Carl Hahnemann, our Alaska general manager, I got to know when I was at Fort Knox and he was with Tech. And then uh, I got to know Carl even better as I was at DNR and and he was the Alaska region manager uh, working on the Pogo project. Um, you get all this experience, but you also get the relationships. But I truly retired, Jeb. This time I was going to stay retired. Uh, we love Alaska, love flying, getting outdoors. Uh, grandkids are here, and and there's it's just a wonderful place to be. But uh, no, but it was just an opportunity. Carl Hahnemann kept saying, "Tom, you need to come at least look at what we have. Just take a look at it. Take a look at the ore body. Take a look at the location. All the fundamentals that are so important and." The more I looked at it, Jeb, I was convinced uh, we can really make this a mine. When we came to do Fort Knox, you had all the questions. Uh, you can't do a big mine in the interior. Can you haul all the reagents in? Can you do it safely can, for the people? Can you protect the environment? Um, all those questions have been answered. Yes, you can, and it's clear you can. Now the big equipment companies are here. You have the support facilities. You have trained workforce. Uh, and here we have a mine on a paved road accessible. The, the state of Alaska has designated that area primary surface land use for mine is mining uh, based upon all the old placer work done out there. This mine can be built. The responsibility and the opportunity is ours. We design it correctly, we can get permits, and this will be a mine, and this will be uh, a very positive contributor for years to some company, uh, to ours included. And, Jeb, I've got to add on to this. Uh, it's the privilege I've had of working with such high-class people, and particularly here now, uh, it's the team that matters. And I can't say enough positive about uh, Kinross, how they're running the Fort Knox project, and Sumitomo, how they're running the Pogo mine. These guys are doing so well for safety of employees, the environment, value to their companies, value to their investors. They're making it much easier for us to develop this mine. Tom Irwin. CEO of International Tower Hill Mines, which can be traded as THM on the New York Stock Exchange, MKT, and as ITH on the TSX. Thanks so much for being back here with us and for giving us an update on Tower Hill Mines going into 2015. Jeb, it's a privilege. Thank you.